In this lesson, I'll show you how to calculate Gibbs's free energy and predict spontaneity from delta H and delta S. The first question reads, consider the reaction for the decomposition of carbon tetrachloride gas. Notice that we've been given delta H and delta S. Calculate delta G at 25 degrees Celsius and determine whether the reaction is spontaneous. Now before we begin answering, it's important to note that a reaction is spontaneous if Gibbs's free energy is negative. So be mindful of that. The formula we'll be using is shown right here where delta G is equal to delta H minus T times delta S. And in case you're not familiar, delta H is the change in enthalpy and delta S is the change in entropy. So let's begin. We have delta G is equal to delta H 95.7 minus since this one is in joules, and this is in kilojoules, it's also appropriate to change that into joules so that everything works. We can change kilojoules to joules by multiplying by 1,000. So this is 95,700 joules. I'll write the unit. Now the temperature, notice that delta S is joules per Kelvin. We need to change 25 degrees Celsius into Kelvin, and we can use the formula where 273 plus your Celsius amount is that amount in Kelvin. So adding these up, 273 plus 25, we don't need a calculator for that. So I'll just write down 298 Kelvin. 298 Kelvin, multiply two, as you can tell from the formula, 142.2. Let's use our calculator. Starting with 298 times 142.2, we have delta G is equal to 95,700 minus this number, 42375, 42375.6. So we have 95700 minus the answer, 53.3. 53.3 times 10 raised to the power of 3. Notice that this number is positive, and as mentioned earlier, if it's negative, then it's spontaneous. And if it's positive, it's not. So this is not spontaneous. That's also confirmed in question B where we asked, if the reaction is not spontaneous at 25 degrees, which it's not, determine at which temperature, if any, the reaction becomes spontaneous. So they're asking us technically, when does G become negative? What we can do to answer this is set G as zero and solve for T. Because by doing that, notice that the formula gives us free energy. It's minus T delta S. So by setting G as zero, the answer we get for T, anything greater than that, will give us a delta G that is negative, since this part of the equation is negative. In case that's confusing, I'm going to set delta G equal to zero is equal to 95,700 minus T, notice that we've left T blank, multiplied to 142.2. Let's solve for T. I'll bring this number over, negative 95,700, and then divide both sides by 142.2 is equal to, and that should be negative, T. 95,700 divided by 142.2. The negatives would cancel out anyway, that's why I'm not including them. We get to three significant figures, 672 or 673. 673 Kelvin. As I mentioned, 673 Kelvin is when delta G is zero. If we increase T, if we increase this number, let's say to 273.1, then you will get a negative delta G. So delta G is negative, when the temperature is greater, T is greater than 273 Kelvin. In question two, we're asked, consider the following reaction. Calculate delta G at 25 degrees and determine whether the reaction is spontaneous. And does delta G become more negative or more positive as the temperature increases? So let's do this really quickly. Notice that this is in kilojoules again. Delta G is equal to negative 1375. Multiply that by 1,000 gives us 1, 2, more zeros. Minus the temperature, which was 298, times negative 120.5.
negative one three seven five zero zero minus two ninety eight times negative one twenty point five. We get a delta G value that is negative one hundred and one point five nine one times ten to the power of three. This needs to be one digit after the decimal. So if we round this, it's negative 101.6 times 10 to the power of three joules. So since it's negative, it's going to be spontaneous. And I'll write that down, it's going to be spontaneous. And it's asking, does delta G become more negative or more positive as the temperature increases? Notice the numbers here are negative, whereas in question one, they were both positive. So if we set this up, delta G is equal to, and remember that delta H was negative, negative, minus a temperature, and delta S was also negative. So hypothetically speaking, if we were to place a positive number right now into T, just think of a positive number, we would end up with negative that positive number, which makes it negative. Negative and a negative make a positive. You would then be combining a negative number with a positive number. Depending on how big that positive number is, your delta G could be either positive or negative, which suggests that the bigger your positive number is, or the more positive the temperature becomes, the more it increases, in other words, the less likely delta G is to be negative. So does delta G become more negative or more positive? It becomes more positive if you increase the temperature more and more and more. And there you have it. That is how to calculate Gibbs's free energy and predict spontaneity from, from delta H and delta S.